Hi, my name is Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht, Tally Ho. So we've just got back after quite a few weeks back in the UK and I'm really excited to get stuck into the work on the boat again now. It does sound like we just missed a lot of rain, a lot of wind, so it was probably quite a good time to be away. And I've just got to clean up the yard and get a few things ready uh, before I can get back on the tools. <laughs> So the first major job to do now that I'm back is to finish off the beam shelves and get them installed in the boat. They're made of Angelique, a very heavy and tough uh, tropical hardwood and they're going to have to be bent really quite severely to get into the right shape to be in the boat. Each of these beams is made of two pieces which are scarfed together. Um, I've already cut the scarfs but I've got to fasten them but before I fasten them I'm going to plane the top and the bottom faces because once I fasten them there'll be uh, bolts sticking out of the top and the bottom so I won't be able to plane it. Now, I'm feeling very spoiled right now because uh, over Christmas somebody very kindly bought me this beautiful big Makita power planer off of my Amazon wish list. So thank you Mike, thank you very much and big thanks as well to everyone else who bought things off of the wish list and everyone who's supporting the project via Patreon or via donations on PayPal. You guys are what makes this possible. <laughs> What's she doing? <laughs> She's sniffing the punch's tail. <laughs> <laughs> So right after I got back, uh, I was trying to figure out what fastenings to use for the beam shelf scarfs and uh, I was looking in the area, I realised that Noah had the bolts that I wanted, so I figured I'd make them. Now up until now, when I've needed to thread a piece of bronze, I've been going down to the Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op and they've very kindly been letting me use their machine, which is awesome and I really appreciate it. But I don't want to be going down there every time I need to do that, especially as the project goes on and I'm going to have to do it more and more. So I managed to get my hands on this old threading machine and um, it's in a bit of a state, it's going to need a bit of serious work I think to get it going. Um, but it was cheap and hopefully once this thing is going, I can make all my own bolts here and it will save me a lot of time and, and money. Now I did test this thing before I put it in the truck <laughs> uh, just to make sure the motor worked but uh, just to prove it to you guys I'm going to plug it in again.
Well, that just tripped my power supply. It seems to be tripping the RCD inside the workshop. Oh, this machine clearly needs a lot of work. It needs complete clean rewiring. There's a lot of slop in uh, some of this stuff. So I think there may be some rebushing that needs to be done. For now, I'm just gonna see if I can get it running. Uh, because what I'd really like to do is, is just thread the fastenings to the beam shelf. If it's working, then later on, I'd do a proper restoration on it and get it all cleaned up and nice and maybe I'll get someone to help out with that. But right now I just want to get it working so I can move on with what I need to do on the boat. Well, the threading machine is working. Um, I'm quite surprised it's working so well, to be honest, considering there's so much slop in it, and just considering the overall condition, uh, I managed to make a pretty nice thread on this half-inch bronze rod, and it's actually a really tight fit on the nut. Now, it's obviously not finished. This machine needs a lot of attention still, but for now, it's just about working, and I can use it to make uh, just the few bolts that I need to fasten the beam shelves together so I can finish them off. It took me quite a while to get the actual cutters dialed in. You can adjust how deep each cutter goes and although there's some marks on the adjustment screw, um, I found that they're fairly meaningless so it's more of a case of trial and error. Um, but I managed to get them dialed in really well now so that they're each cutting quite evenly. And I've now got a uh, bunch of bolts. Now I was finding that the first part of the thread was not cutting that well and I think that's because there's so much play in the cutter on the rails but once it gets about half an inch in then it sort of settles down into where it should be and then the thread is really clean and I've actually found that if I'm really careful when I push the cutter onto the rod then I can actually get that pretty nice and clean right from the very beginning. Now I cleaned out the oil bath um, so that I could get some lubricant in there. I actually didn't have enough cutting oil to um, fill that up and it's a Sunday so I couldn't get any. So I just used a mixture of engine oil and water and a bit of washing up liquid to help them mix. That works pretty well as a lubricant. Now it's not ideal obviously because uh, it's mostly water so it's going to promote rust if I was to leave it in there. But it was fine for today uh, just while I was getting this up and running and making a couple of bolts. This Makita power plane is doing a really, really good job. The Triton power planer, which I was using before, the seven inch one, um, they're really good value for money. They're pretty affordable, uh, but it's really no match for this machine, which is just a lot more capable. Um, the other good thing about it is the blades aren't disposable. Um, so 
I was using a lot of blades and having to throw them away with a triton. Uh, I did try sharpening them, but it wasn't working out. But the blades on this machine are designed to be sharpened. That's uh, a lot more cost effective in the long run, and it's also um, less waste, which is good. It does mean though that I have to spend time sharpening them, and especially with this timber because it's so dense and hard, uh, I have to sharpen them fairly often, um, probably every hour or so of planing. So I'm about to fasten the scarves in the beam shelves and uh, to drill the hole for the bolts I'm going to use this half inch auger bit but this is an auger with a screw tip to it and as such it pulls itself into the wood at really quite a fast rate which is fine for softwoods but in a very hard wood like this Angelique uh, that's going to put a lot of torque strain on the drill bit and on the drill and so there's a higher chance of of snapping the drill bit off inside the um, piece of wood, which would be a real disaster. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a barefoot auger bit, uh, which is an auger bit with no screw tip on the end. It just ends with the cutting edge of the sort of outside thread. So I'm just going to cut the screw off basically. It's pretty simple. <laughs> So the nice thing about a barefoot auger, like this one, is that I can really drill at whatever pace I feel comfortable with and making sure that I'm not digging in too much, putting too much torque on the bit or the machine. And I can also pull the bit out at any point to clear the chips and check the temperature of the end. The only downside to having a barefoot auger, apart from the fact that it can be a bit slower, which is also a good thing, uh, is that it's hard to start off a hole with a bare foot because there's no uh, screw to centre it on so I usually just have to start the hole with a regular twist bit So this plywood was just clamped on there to limit the tear out in the grain on the top and the bottom of the piece of wood and you may also notice that the holes I drilled are not evenly spaced and um, that may seem odd but it's actually because there's going to be deck beams on top of here and so I've had to position these bolts so that their position won't interfere with the fastenings for the deck beams. So at the moment I've got two bolts here and then once the deck beams are on there'll be another bolt here and here going all the way through the beam shelf. 
So as I mentioned uh, a few videos ago, I'm not going to put any bedding in these joints. I'm not going to bother putting any paint in uh, or any tar or anything. The reason for that is that these joints are going to be fairly visible probably in the saloon. And as this timber is quite green, quite high moisture content, it's probably going to shrink and that joint is probably going to open up. So I'm not going to be surprised to see a gap in that joint in a few years time. And what I don't want is um, sort of tar or paint squidging out of that or even really being visible on the inside of the boat. As it's going to be accessible, it's also going to be fairly easy to make sure that it's dry and that water isn't getting in there and that it's not rotting. So in this case, it's perfectly fine to just leave a joint like this dry. There is actually a school of thought that um, you don't need to use bedding nearly as much as some of us do. And um, I, I know several boat builders who use a lot of sort of dry joints like this. Anyway, it's ready for some bolts. So I'm gonna hammer this in and I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on the shaft of the bolt um, to make sure it goes in nice and easy. I hope it's long enough. So I'm sure you guys remember um, a little while ago I had some white oak milled on the east coast of the states and I reached out to see if there was anyone that wanted to help me get that from the east coast to the west coast here and amazingly a guy called Marshall got back to me, a retired firefighter and uh, he had a big trailer and wanted to make the trip. So he's been driving across the country and um, he should be actually arriving here any minute now. Leo. Marshall. How are you? Hey man. I have a uh, delivery for the tally ho. Great to see you. <laughs> oh. Very Thank nice you. to meet you, sir. Really good to meet you. So I'm Marshall Moneymaker. I'm a retired firefighter from Montgomery County, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, while I was on the job, I lost three of my seven sisters to breast cancer. 
I guess my shift mates not only supported me going through the, the you know battling cancer, but I guess they were so impressed with what I was doing as a, on the volunteer circuit that they got me the pink fire gear. The DC media started calling me the pink firefighter. Uh, on the long ride home one day, I got to thinking about it, and I said, you know what, let's do something with this. Uh, I begged my wife, and she wholeheartedly agreed. I've since retired. She quit her job, and we started Four Three Sisters in their honor. Uh, we are a breast cancer support nonprofit. And what that means is we support fighters, survivors, and their families with products, services, financial aid, anything you can think of. Um, I was watching one of your videos and you talked about the need of getting the timber across the country. And I really truly wanted to support you in your effort, um, being impressed with your work ethic and, and what you're doing uh, with this, the history not only that you're saving but you're creating. We came up with a plan that we both liked and agreed on. Uh, I went to my wife and told her what I was going to do, and she said, when are you leaving? I can't thank you enough, man. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again, but yeah. I really appreciate it. You know, true, um, hero. anytime. I'm, I'm glad that something finally came around where I could help you. So the journey actually was actually pretty fantastic. Um, there were some challenges. There was some weather. Oh, man, once you get over these mountains and start getting into this area, it's, it's unbelievably beautiful. And... I guess I'm at a loss for words of how, how beautiful it is and cool it is. There she is. The deck beams for the tally ho. Just barely enough trailer space. Tally ho in the water. We've come across the continental divide, which means we are officially on the west coast. Pistachios in there that she likes as well. It was, it was a little, I'll be honest with you, Leo, it was a little hard taking the wood off because I was so responsible for it for so long, not only to you and Tally Ho, but you know, your, your supporters and your, your viewers out there. It was a little, a little choked up. A little <laughs> you wanted to keep it on the trailer? I, yeah, you know, it's like uh, letting your kid go off to college or something, but uh, you know, it's yours, you need it. I'm glad I could help you and you know, get you squared away. Well, I've had a really good day of unloading today. It was really great to finally meet Marshall. I'm so grateful to him. He didn't want anything for his time. Um, obviously, I paid the fuel and hotels and other expenses 
from the journey, but I wanted to try and repay him a little bit by promoting his charitable work. I'm really, really impressed with the work that Marshall and his wife do back at home, supporting the women who have breast cancer. So thank you, Marshall, and um, thank you, Marshall's wife, for letting him come over here. Thanks to everyone else who has been a part of this story, and um, to everyone else who is going to be. And that very much includes anyone who supported the project um, through donations or being a patron or anything else. The community that's come together around this project um, completely unexpectedly, it really is the only reason that it's able to continue. So I'm very grateful. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.